One of the most provocative questions that we were asked to address at this meeting and during our symposium was whether or not there was still a role for chemotherapy. And so with all the advances made possible with the discovery of the MYD88 mutation and the understanding of its role in uh, helping to trigger uh, Bruton's tyrosine kinase and hematopoietic cell kinase related signaling, you know, with the information that we now know about the impact of CXCR4 mutations on activating AKT and ERK and contributing to drug resistance, and our ability to actually leverage that knowledge and you know, help develop now drugs that target mid-88, drugs that target CXCR4, you know, it's an obvious question, do we still need chemotherapy? Well, the short answer is we do. Because even in this uh, setting, we're still going to be looking at patients who progress off ibrutinib, you know, necessitating you know, near, near, um, new therapeutics. And so one can look at uh, bendamustine uh, and uh, rituxan. One can look at proteasome inhibitor-based therapy. And also, as we've learned, there may be also newcomers such as venetoclax that I think are going to be very exciting you know, for how we treat patients uh, pro post uh, BTK uh, inhibitors. Uh, we also have this population of patients that are mid-88 wild type. These patients show very little activity with ibrutinib alone, and this is a population of patients that still today we use chemotherapy. And so the short answer is, yes, we still need chemotherapy. Uh, the longer answer is, where? <laughs> And there are, you know, relatively, you know, becoming a smaller and smaller confines of where chemotherapy is necessary. And so one of the things I think that's important as a take home to clinicians from this particular presentation is that we have to look to the future. We want to minimize toxicity against patients. And this is where if we can use signal inhibitors like BTK inhibitors to do that early on, then we're actually winning because we're not creating other problems further down the line, such as with alkylators and nucleoside analogs, secondary malignancies, or with bortezomib, you know, peripheral neuropathy, uh, or, you know, hypogamma globulinemia and infections uh, with drugs like rituxan and nucleoside analogs and even proteasome inhibitors. And so the future is bright, but we still need chemotherapy. And uh, perhaps by next ICML, we'll need it even less.